Are you someone who lies to yourself and your friends and anyone who holds hobby true to their heart by saying you don't have enough time to paint a miniature? Well, this is the video for you. I'm going to show you how I'm going to paint a Minas Tirith warrior that I got for free at Games Workshop. That's right, they've got a deal at the moment where you just go in, ask for a free toy soldier and they actually give you one. Um, anyway, I'm going to show you how I'm going to paint this free Minas Tirith Warrior in just 15 minutes. Because you claim you don't have enough time, I say you've probably got 15 minutes spare. So, let's get cracking on the Minas Tirith Warrior. So, I've got uh, the Minas Tirith. He, he is already um, painted black, so I've done that. Uh, I've assembled him, I've put some sand on his base, sprayed it all black and given him a nice undercoat. Uh, I'm going to crack on with some paints. Now, I will list all the paints below me uh, as we work through this, but... Um, I'm not going to uh, probably get them accurate at the moment because I've got a lot of old GW paints, so um, I'm going to just use some of those. So first, we dry brush. Uh, this is, if you don't know what a dry brush is, basically it's just getting a little bit of paint on your brush and your dry brush uh, over the uh, over the armour particularly. I'm not bothered about getting it everywhere uh, or sort of, you know, uh, trying to avoid any particular point of the model because ultimately this is the first layer we're going to be neatening up uh, over the course of the, uh, the 15 minutes we've got, uh, which I've already spent about a minute of um, just sort of shouting at you essentially. So uh, let's cra crack on. So it's actually quite, uh, it go goes on quite easily on this model. Um, as long as you haven't gone too thick on your undercoat, uh, then you can do a nice job of it. So there you go. Oh, I'm almost done. See, uh, beginner's work, easily done. So this is using a, a Army Painter small dry brush, um, but any old big brush will do. Um, so there you go. Right, okay. Oh, don't forget the end of the spear. So there we go. Look, end of the spear. Uh, not too bad. And look, I must say, these models are really good. I mean, how old are they? 20 years old or thereabouts, nearly 20 years old uh, this uh, coming year. So uh, so they're looking pretty good for it. And that is already done. So I've not done too much detail on the shield yet because eventually we'll, um, we'll blacken that bit out, but not too difficult. Right, done. So that's the dry brush done. So while that dries, uh, we're going to go for a, a slightly bigger brush um, and some Mordian blue, which uh, is an old foundation paint, but any dark blue will do. Uh, and I use blue in my Minister of Forest. You can see here that it's actually, it's kind of black on the box, um, the material. I don't like that. It looks too drab and gray and a bit sort of boring and doesn't quite provide enough contrast between the uh, the uh, silver and stuff. So I go with a nice little blue. Um, it ties it back to the, uh, the Numenorians and the sort of the journey across the sea and all that sort of stuff, which I think uh, gives it a nice little bit of uh, little bit of uh, history to it. I mean, there's such a depth in Tolkien's law that why not? Uh, so I'm using, for this one, I don't actually know, the um, the, br the brush is completely worn off the paint. So I think it's just a standard uh, army painted brush for this one. So, it, and it's a bit raggedy and old and crap actually, to be fair. Probably should have used something better, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm cracking on, I'm cracking on because it's not gonna take long. You can see I'm, I'm, I'm not, you know, not rushing it too much because actually sometimes, um, precision saves time, but uh, I'll be honest, you don't need to be that that careful at this stage. So that's it. That's all I'm doing for that. So um, I might. Is there a little bit of material under the arms? Uh, yeah, there is a little bit. So just in the back here, you might be able to just see, just make out the model there underneath the arms. It's not actually armor. It's just a bit of material there. So I'll just do a little bit of blue there. The same on the sleeve, is that blue? Yeah, uh, oh yeah, it is blue. Right, okay, let's go. Let's get a bit more, God, I'm running out of time already. This is getting a bit anxious. Uh, I've never painted something. So, oh crap, I've got it on the, damn it, I've got it on the chain mail. Okay, so I'm failing already, right? So we'll, we'll have to go back to that in a second. So this is, this is the d drama uh, of doing it all in real time. So there we go, painted his sleevey bit. I'm gonna leave the gloves, uh, do them later in gray. There's a little bit of stuff in there. I don't know if you can make out what I'm doing here. There you go. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay, that's not bad. Right. So I've got some black over here. I'm going to just redo the uh, redo the chainmail. Where have I done it? I've ruined it. Yeah. Okay. So that's just wiping it off a bit. There we go. That's that's done a decent job of wiping off. Right, okay, so I've, li I've laid my paints out all in a line so that it makes it easier for me to uh, remember where I am. But uh, next, I don't need to let the blue dry. <clears throat> I'm going to go straight 
Okay, let's look at that. Straight onto the fang. Um, you'll notice that I'm doing it straight out of the pots. Uh, usually I'd put it on some sort of pallet um, or something, but GW pots are great for this. You can just do it straight out of the, straight out of the pot if they're mixed up enough, if I've shaken up. So I'm gonna get a load of paint on my, the ferrule of my paintbrush now, but it's fine. So it's still kind of wet, but that's okay. And it's just layering straight onto the raised surfaces. Not too bad. And then a little bit of a line there, a little bit of a line here, and at the front as well. Not too shabby at all. Right. And then in there as well. Getting a nice little, nice little contrast there. So that's that's already looking all right. So that's the grey. Now we need to get some shading onto the um, uh, onto well, some highlighting really on the uh, the armour first. So I'm going to go for some chainmail again. I think it's Stormhost Silver or something. Uh, no, it's not Stormhost Silver. It's the other one. Um, one of the two. I'm going to kind of do a dry brush highlight, but um, only on the armour bit. So. I'll put a nice little bit there, a uh, little blob there. See what I'm doing there, not too much highlighting. Uh, it's nice and wet still, so I'll just quickly dab the ends, dab the ends, dab the ends, dab the ends. Uh, I'm not, not being too finicky about this because I know um, Steve Crow of uh, Battle Streams in Middle Earth and Top Table Gaming fame has come under flack before for doing a uh, a, a tutorial where he goes, yeah, just paint all the layers and then just a quick edge highlight on everything. Um, but, and I know what he's saying. It, it can feel quite quick when you're doing an edge highlight sometimes, but um, it's it's one of those ones that takes a bit of getting used to, I think. So so here, I'm not actually going to edge highlight. I'm just going to kind of dry brush over the top um, so that it speeds the process up. Um, and I'm just going to poke a little bit of metal in that hole and onto the to the motif on the chest make sure we get that that shoulder bit that's not bright enough is it uh, there we go so it is kind of i'm kind of dry brush and i'm kind of ed edge highlighting um it's just a speeding speedy technique that i found that you can sometimes have it's kind of like a, a wet wet brush not a dry brush it's kind of using the um the moisture of the paint to just just sort of almost dry brush over the edges but obviously it layers on a bit thicker than it would do if the brush was dry so uh, which or if there's very little paint on in a dry brush sense so so that's looking all right I think we've already got a bit of a highlight going there uh, get get some stuff there oh there's this little bit here we've got a little blue one as well oh yeah that's made it look much better it's popped out straight away there we go so at what time are we on eight minutes god we're almost halfway there and I've only done the metal right let's uh Let's do that quick. Right, so that's while that's drying, we'll get some storm vermin fur. We need to get some wash on in, in a little bit, but I think we'll be able to do it. Okay, so storm vermin fur is going on the boots uh, or sort of the, the materials on the back of the, the legs, the trousery bits. I don't know whether it's boots as well or not. I'm kind of highlighting with it because um, there's black already on, on the base coat, so don't waste it basically. So there we go, um, look at that, it's already coming together. I'm gonna to use the back of the shield as well in a gray, as if it's been kind of painted on the back. Um, and I might highlight that later if I have enough time, uh, just, just so that it doesn't look like you've not bothered painting it really. Uh, then the sword will get a layer as well. Now I'm gonna be careful here because I wanna have, leave some black between the sort of edges again here, so it's kind of like a, a shading device. So um, <clears throat> if you paint all the way up to the edge, bar like a millimeter, it kind of leaves this little shadow and then you don't have to go back to it with wash or anything like that later. So that's doing that, that's good. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with how that looks so far. Right, <clears throat> all right, we're, we're getting close to the 10 minute mark. So we're actually uh, not doing very well. Uh, right, so let's get my flesh tone first. So flesh tone goes, try and get a nice thin layer of this. Oh, it's probably a little thick, but, and then I'm gonna leave the gap in the mouth um, black for now. So just try and kind of dry brush over it, using the detail of the model to help you out here. Okay, we're getting there, we're getting there. Oh, I've got a bit on the, bit on the edge of the metal, you see? 
it's the only edge of the nose but that's okay that's okay we, we can get we can get around that because it's going to be washed in a bit anyway so and i'll go under his chinny chin chin yeah not bad it's tricky right okay so we've got now we're, we're getting somewhere in terms of getting an actual it's looking a little bit I don't know, a little bit lacking in detail. So we'll get a bit more um, grey. Um, I forgot to do the gloves because they're covered in metal at the moment. So we've got some gloves. So we paint all the way around them. Try and leave the uh, lines in the fingers a little bit shaded. Good. Now, luckily, there's only one glove, so we do that. All right now, here's a biggie, a wash. I don't know what you're thinking. This is never going to dry in time, but don't put too much on. Look, look at the amount of put on the brush. Not much at all. So we'll just put that on there. And that's going to be the only bit of wash we use. We just use a little bit there, put it onto the thing as well, and onto the helmet, sort of the little re recesses on the helmet. Try and get a few in the lines between the uh, the plate mail on the shoulders as well. And that, that is just giving a little something, something. Okay, now we need to get onto the straps. So I've got dry and bark for that dry out bark so you can see um, I'm licking my um, brush between each thing uh, I am washing uh, I can taste foundation paint in my mouth at the moment but that's okay it's not poisonous it just tastes a bit rubbish I remember they had a big campaign about well not a campaign but they were, I remember them saying in White Dwarf um, when they released the foundation paints just say so you no know, they're not toxic but they don't taste very good so uh, anyone who likes to lick their brushes will get a shock with the new foundation paints and I tell you what I remember when I first did it and I thought, this is absolutely revolting. But now I've gotten used to it. Um, and I, I still do it, even though I know that it's a bad idea. But lots of people don't even bother um, keep keeping their brushes to a point. I don't know what you, some people use their fingers, their palms, the rolls of the skin and all that sort of stuff on the palms. But I find the brush in the mouth, is just it's just the quickest way. In the most precise way. So the brown here is is really just to just to divide up the grey and the blue. So it's not standing out massively at this point, but hopefully when I've got a highlight on it, will do. I'm going to do the hair in that as well. I know it's a bit weird having leather in the same colour as your hair, but it's just again making it stand out a lot of focus there. Okay, so that's good. All right. <clears throat> so is that a bit of? Pink, I thought it was pink on his chest, but it's just a reflection on this thingy. So we'll get a bit of Cadian flesh tone in the face as well. Da -da -da -da. Oh, that's much too much. So that's all, all I'm doing there. Look, I dab it in and then use the tip of the brush just to sort of absorb some of the uh, some of the, oh, the residue there. Why is it fixing that? So, easy stuff. Then, <clears throat> I'm gonna go back to the shield where we can uh, get some more detail on. No, that's not, that's, that's black, it's gone really watery, it's not very good. Uh, I tried watering it down because it was getting a bit hard. It's clearly done that. I think, oh, it's, it's working relatively well for this purpose, actually. So just, just kind of, restoring some of that the, the the black front of the shield there <coughs> adding some detail right so now um the retributor armor is the next one we're going to go with <coughs> crikey mate this feels a bit rushed so retributor armor for the gold so the gold i mean realistically minister of warriors aren't going to have golden handles on their swords but uh, you can see it in the pictures on the Games Workshop have used it. It's more for just a contrast, really, um, on the model. So it looks nice, makes it stand out. We can assume that they're actually brass or something like that. Um, and it looks pretty sweet if you do it nicely. So there we go. That's Oh, there's a little bit of blue showing through there. Let's just get that out. There we go. And then, oh, no, I've got my, oh, I've got my finger all black from the shield. Oh, it's all right. It's still going. This is the danger of doing it too quickly. So... I'm going to do that blob in the middle there as gold. Do that as gold. Now we're actually getting... Oh, I'm going to do the bottom of this as gold as well. Just, just to add to a little, a little more contrast. I think. 
don't know if that's going to look any good or not, but yeah, it's a little nice contrast underneath the shield, isn't it? Uh, right, okay, we're coming up to the 15 minute mark. So uh, the last thing I want to do to detail it. Oh no, I've not got a colour out. Oh, I need a, I need a different colour for the shaft of the spear wheel. Um, yeah, let's just go back to the dryer bark then, I guess. So the haft of the spear is going to go. Oh, it's brown, 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 we go, I think. Is that about 15 minutes? I think it is. So there we go. Uh, we've got a Minister of Warrior painted in 15 minutes. I think that's fine. <laughs> it's, not, it's not my best work, it's fair to say. Um, but you've got the detail. So you've got a, a face, you've got some uh, shading on there, you've got some detailing like the gold on the uh, on the spear there uh, and you've got the blue um, to make it pop a little bit once that is based up with uh, a little highlight um, and some tufts I think that will be absolutely fine that just shows you it's not impossible to do some painting in 15 minutes it can be a bit stressful it's thirsty work um, it's a bit stressful but you can do it and, and I suppose the point here of this video isn't to show you that you know you need to do this in 15 minutes. It's not something that uh, I'm compelling you to paint every single model you get uh, in 15 minutes, but you can do um, 15 minutes of painting every day and clear that backlog, as the uh, Battle Streams of Middle Earth guys would say, or or just just get some models done that you you really need to. And at the moment, Games Workshop is giving out a free one of these uh, at Games Workshop shops, uh, or Warhammer shops as they're called now. So go down to one of them, grab yourself a free model, um, and you know what? Spend 15 minutes and restore your love of uh, the Lord of the Rings um, Middle Earth strategy battle game hobby. I'm going to finish this guy up uh, and just tell you exactly how much longer I spent on it after I finished the initial 15 minutes. But thanks very much for watching another Battle Games in Middle Earth video. There's more on the way. Cheers. So I probably spent another 10 minutes on this model and that includes doing the base and uh, sticking that tuft on which I did uh, basically a brown dry brush with a light grey and glued a little tuft on. Um, I did do some extra work um, highlighting the straps in a higher light of Gorthor brown uh, and I also put an extra layer of Fenrisian grey on the blue uh, as well as uh, just touching up the face but getting a little bit of red inside the mouth uh, and just neatening up some of the details um, and particularly the haft of the spear highlighting give it a bit of a wood grain effect with some Gorthor brown but again this was only an extra few minutes on top of the initial thing and the initial model didn't look too bad tabletop standard in 15 minutes is very much achievable thanks very much for watching uh, if you've enjoyed this video do subscribe there's more on the way uh, and also if you want to support the channel please head over to the patreon scheme uh, you can win yourself some Entmoot and Battle Games in Middle-earth merchandise as well as getting yourself into a, a regular prize draw. Thanks very much for watching.